Um, so without further ado, to make sure we get the most use of our time, I'll hand it over to our um, leader today, Trevor Kelly. Awesome. Thanks, Glenn. And maybe I should introduce myself. I'm Trevor Kelly. I'm a solutions architect uh, with BlackBot. We're going to be kind of going through building custom connectors to the Microsoft Power Platform. Reason why I thought that this might be useful for a lot of the folks um, here who are maybe citizen developers for the Razor's Edge NXT and have built Power Automate flows or Power Apps uh, and have connected to the Power Platform with Razor's Edge, with the Razor's Edge connector. Uh, there might be some things that you want to do that just don't have a standard connector to the Microsoft Power Platform. I think last time I checked, there's just shy of maybe 500 different services and apps that you can that that have standard connectors. Blackboard Razor's Edge NXT is one of them. But you might run into a situation where you want to uh, connect to something else that doesn't have a standard connector, but maybe they have an API whatever vendor that you might be uh, trying to um, access data from or data to. So I thought maybe a good place to start is um, let's just look at an API real quick and talk about what it does and then how would we bring that API into the Microsoft Power Platform. So it is amazing some of the things that you can find on the internet. Um, one of the uh, as I was kind of preparing for this and I was looking for really easy to use free APIs. And of course, because the internet being what it is, there is a cat fax API that I thought, well, this could be interesting. Maybe, maybe you have a use case where you want to send your razor's edge NXT constituents, a random cat fact every day until they give a donation. That, that could be something that you might want to do. But here is, um, here's the CatFax API. Notice that there are a series of get calls. Get is the verb um, where it is returning data from some database that somebody has on random cat facts. Uh, and it includes facts, it includes different cat breeds apparently. Uh, and so I wanted to try this out. So if I run this get cat fact, I can expand it here, and I can click the execute button just to see what this returns, it gives me some responses down below. And in the body of the response, we get a fantastic fact that 37% of American homes today have at least one cat. I can run this call again just by clicking the execute button. It's estimated that cats can make over 60 different sounds. Who would have thought? But I thought this might be a really fun and easy first go round to, um, to bring this into the Power Platform. So uh, there it is in the chat if you want to look at it and get your own cat facts. But these are just standard get APIs that return information about cats. Uh, it gives me kind of that base URL on here, the different paths as they call. Uh, as they are called, where you can look at cat breeds, cat facts, these are all called paths. And then your verb, get, um, could be a post if you wanted to add your own. Looks like this one doesn't support adding your own cat facts, but you could post cat facts. There might be a delete option in some cases, depending on what the vendor is allowing you to do with that database. So I thought, great. Let's see if we can get cat facts into the Power Platform. Um, I'm going to switch over to my Power Automate, just going to flow.microsoft.com. I'm assuming that everyone in this session has used Power, uh, Power Automate in the past. Um, so hopefully this is somewhat familiar to you all. If not, just go to flow.microsoft.com. It should redirect you to a page that looks like this. And then on the left-hand side, you've got your navigation of different menu items. I'm just going to create a new flow. And the flow that I am going to create, if you're following along, is an instant cloud flow. I just want to push a button and make it run. So I'm just going to name this one CatFax. Click a button that says manually trigger this flow with a button, and then click the Create button. 
and then it has it started for me. And so the, the easiest way for me to retrieve a cat fact um, in Power Automate is to just go to an HTTP action. So I can hit new step, do a search for HTTP. And then I am going to choose this just HTTP action at the top here. And then it's going to ask you what is the method or the verb that we're going to use. If I want to get the cat fact, I can say get. And then it's going to ask for a request URL. So if I go back into the API documentation, I can um, see that it is catfact.ninja slash whatever the path is, slash fact or slash facts if I want multiple facts, slash breeds if I want to. Um, let me just, I'm going to do the fact one. And since I already tested this, I can actually find it down here, the entire path. It's HTTPS colon slash slash cat facts dot ninja slash fact. So I'm going to put that in the request URL. Um, for this one, it doesn't require any sort of um, authentication. It doesn't require any um, additional parameters. I should be able to just run this and be able to have it return a cat fact. So let me save this and see if this works. There we go. And now I can test it. Just going to hit manual test and run the flow. And when that runs, I can expand this HTTP call, scroll down. It gives me a 200 status code, which means it was successful. And then at the very bottom, you can see in the body, it gives me that specific cat fact. Cat fact, if I can say that, about baking chocolate. Um, so don't apparently don't do that um, if you're going to be feeding your cat. So this is great, um, but it, it's really not that pretty, right? Because we've got, it comes back in, in this, uh, the body response is in JSON, which if I'm trying to push that to an email, if I want to email people a random cat fact, I probably just want the fact itself. I don't care about the length. I don't really want the curly braces or any of the other JSON formatting. So one thing that you could do, if I go back into the edit, I can add another step and parse out the JSON. There's a parse JSON operation. Notice down below, if I just type in the word parse, parse JSON, and then I'm going to take the response body from the HTTP step above. It is going to ask for a schema. So I like to generate this from a sample where I can take a sample response. I'll just take this one that we did previously, copy it and then paste it in here. And it's automatically um, parses out what the, what the fact is gonna be. It also gives me the length. And so now if I add another new step, let's say I wanna email somebody, uh, I'll use Office 365, send an email. I'm just gonna send it to myself. And then in the body of the email, I can take out that fact. Notice it gives me, after the parse JSON, gives me that fact. And then I can email it to myself. And I can schedule this to run. Here's your daily cat fact. I can schedule this to run daily. It goes out, it calls the cat API, parses it, and then sends me the fact. So that, that would be the easiest way is just to call the HTTP action parse the JSON, and then send out the fact. But if you wanted to actually use this over and over again, and, and again, we want folks that are using Power Automate to be low code developers, um, this probably doesn't really sit well with them to have to have two steps, have to understand the different get methods, have to understand that they have to parse the JSON, easier way to, for non-coding folks to consume the cat fact API 
would be to build a, um, a connector for it. And luckily, there is documentation or a Swagger file for the CatFax API that you can use. It's just catfax.ninja.docs. And this is the code that describes how to, um, how to add this API or how to use this API that you can really just import into uh, the Microsoft Power Platform. So this uses a standard called, um, you might hear it called Swagger or Open API or Postman file. You can learn more about this in, um, if you go to swagger.io, I believe. It, uh, it describes kind of the, the syntax around Open API and Swagger files. This is how I typically create new connectors into the Power Platform. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go under the data option on the left hand side, click on custom connectors. OK, I'm not going to save it. And when I get to this page, you're probably going to see a lot of different custom connectors that have either myself or other members of my organization have added um, to our environment. And to add a new custom connector, I'm going to click on where it says new custom connector, and I'm going to import an open API from a URL. And that URL is going to be this right here that you're seeing, this documentation that's describing the, um, how the APIs are used. This is that Swagger file. So I am going to import open API from URL. I am going to call this catfax is the name of my connector. And then I'm just going to paste in not that. catfax.ninja slash docs. There we go. And then hit import. and hit continue. And then what it's gonna do is it's going to bring me to a page that looks like this. You've got four different steps to complete this connector. You gotta fill out the general information and you can upload your own icon for it. Um, if not, it's just gonna leave it looking like this, this little green symbol. You can, um, you can put a description in there, change the description if you want to. Uh, if there is any security, that is required for this. In this case, there's not, so it says no authentication. The uh, definition are all the different actions that you can call. So I can get the cat breed, I can get cat fact if I want one fact or several facts, and then I can test this out if I wanted to. I'm just gonna click on create connector here. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring in all of the different methods or calls that I can make to the CatFax API. So again, I rather than just doing the HTTP action where I'm making one call, by bringing in this custom connector, I now have access to all of these different actions uh, and can use that now within my Power Automate flows. And here's where it shows up. Here it is, CatFax, which shows up under custom connectors. So now if I create a new flow, I'm just gonna do another instant flow, and I will call this um, CatFax version two. I'm gonna say manually trigger the flow with a button, click my create button. Now, when I add a new step, instead of calling that HTTP action, I can go to the custom tab and there is my cat fax custom connector that I just created and click on that. And then I can choose whatever action I want to get a list of cat fax, return a random cat fact. I'm just going to do this one again. It says that it is creating. I can set a maximum length if I want to. That's an optional field. 
And then I can set up another email to go out or I can send it to teams or whatever I want to do with it. Um, let's go back into my outlook, uh, send an email to myself. That fact, and then in the body of the email, notice I can just take that fact option, and this becomes much more simple to use where I'm just calling that custom connector and then taking the response or the output of that into my email body. All right, I'll save this. I will run a quick test to see if this works. Give it a second to save. Test it manually. And hopefully I'm connected to Outlook. There we go. Then I'm going to hit continue. All right. So this looks like it succeeded. Any moment I should be getting a cat fact in my email. It looks like it just did. Um, and if I open it up, you can see what that email looks like. So it, it doesn't return that JSON code. It's returning really just HTML code, which renders nicely with an email. And it's telling me that cats only sweat through their paws and nowhere else on their body. You guys are already learning a whole lot about cats that you probably were not expecting from coming to the skills lab session, but there you go. So it worked. So that was, again, really simple way to add a custom connector into the Power Platform as long as you've got this, um, uh, this Swagger file, which defines all the different actions that you can take uh, and as long as it's got open APIs, you can do it. So let's let's take a break from learning about cats. And um, I want to talk about another use case. And you might have seen some of the things that I asked for within the prerequisites for this skills lab. And that is for um, another tool that Blackbot offers called Just Giving. For those of you that don't know what Just Giving is, it is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tool that is free to customers. And when I say free, um, it, it, there's no software cost, there's no licensing cost. The only thing that Blackbud charges for with Just Giving is a transactional fee. So when somebody donates to a, um, a fundraiser who's raising money on behalf of your organization, Blackbud uh, takes out um, a, a portion of that of that donation, um, but you get to keep the rest. So it's a very flexible, really cool tool um, that lets anyone off the street, any random person can go in and start fundraising for your organization, reach out to their friends and family, let them know that they have a fundraising page and hopefully start raising money on your behalf. The cool thing about Just Giving is that it is a open platform with REST APIs. And again, the nice thing about it is that you don't have to contract with an account with your sales rep in order to get access to it. You already have access to it. And if you don't have to use, if you're not a Razor's Edge NXT customer, or if you don't want to use the Razor's Edge NXT registration forms that come out of the box, you can really use anything. You can create an Eventbrite form. You can create a Microsoft form. You can create SurveyMonkey. And if one of those questions on that form is, hey, do you want to create a fundraiser as part of this campaign or as part of this event that we're doing? And they check the box that says yes. You don't want to send them to a completely separate environment where they have to go out and fill out all their information again, their name, their email address. You want to be able to automatically create that fundraising page for them. And so luckily, just giving has open APIs that can allow the power platform to do that. The only problem is, is that just giving doesn't have a standard connector to the power platform. So what we have to do is we have to create that connector as a custom connector. What does that look like? 
what this page is, is a, um, a listing of all the different uh, Swagger files that Just Giving has. So again, I don't want anyone to have to go out and start building a Swagger file from scratch. You can take advantage of the existing ones that are out there um, and use them to your advantage when you're building out this connector. And if I were to open up one of these, let me open up the fundraising one because that's one that we're gonna do. It looks very similar to the CatFax one where it is um, JSON code that includes all of those different paths that we have. You can see that this is a path for attribution. If I keep scrolling, you'll see one for um, updating pages, um, updating fundraising page summary, delete fundraising pages. So these are all the different paths that you have or all the different actions that you'll be able to take with, um, with this. Go and find the fundraising um, swagger file, which is probably about halfway down the page and, um, and go ahead and click on it. If you wanna download it onto your desktop, I usually click this raw option and then you can right click and hit save as that might be the easiest way to go ahead and download this onto your desktop um, i'm going to save it um, into my downloads or my documents skills lab dash fundraising dot json dot postman collection so i'm going to save this when you have saved that i want you to go back to the github page that has all the different files on it that looks like this. And if you can go to the README, I always, whenever I'm in GitHub, the first place I go is, is looking at the README file. And the reason why I wanna do this is because within that Swagger file, there's some things that we need to configure. And, um, and one of those things is making sure that you are um, pointing it to the right environment, you have to update the uh, the app ID. You have to um, update the authentication token. Unlike the cat fax, there is some security that's uh, that's behind this. We want to make sure that you're authenticating authenticating anyone that's using uh, this this connector. Um, and so there's a few things that we we need to do here. So one of those things is to um, figure out what the app ID is. If I were to open this up, so I'm I'm going to use uh, Notepad because it's easy for me to um, to see and and update things. I could do a find and replace. Notice that app ID is something that I need to update. Anything in these double curly brackets, I need to go in and make some changes. This basic authentication, basic auth, needs to be updated. The URL needs to be updated. So my first step in order to make this Swagger file useful is to update all of those different, um, I guess, variables that are in here that we that we need to configure specifically for our environment. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to update the URL. If I go into a, um, a replace function, which is control H if you're using notepad. Um, find what I'm going to find that URL. Double curly braces URL. And then I'm going to replace that with HTTPS. One slash slash API dot just giving dot com. And so now if I look, scroll down here, notice that the URL has that api.justgiving.com for each of those paths that we have. So now we can now we can make sure that it's pointing to the right um, the right environment here. Because there could be sandbox environments. I'm just pointing it to the main api.justgiving.com. The next thing that I have to um, configure, notice that we've got app ID 
that also needs to be replaced with whatever your application ID is if you have gone out and created an app on the Just Giving developer site. Figure out what my app ID is. I can go to developer.justgiving.com slash admin slash applications. If you've already created an account, you should have a default application that's been created for you. Um, if not, you can add applications. There is a button that you'll see here that says create new application. But if you're already logged in, which you can see I am, you'll see all the different applications that are associated with your user account. Um, and I'm going to use this one, this Blackbots app. This is the default application that was created when I created my developer account. So let me copy that. How many digits is that? That a 10 digit um, application ID. I'm going to go back into Notepad and do a Control H, and I am going to replace the double curly brace app ID with that um, with that 10 digit or 10 character um, app ID. So let me replace all of those. That looks good. Uh, all right. The other thing that I'm noticing here is that um, authentication. So the authorization is asking for a authorization token. And if I go back to GitHub and I look at that readme file, it's telling me that I need to change that basic authentication token to a base64 encoded username and password. And this is a combination. Um, this is the your your just giving um, login. This is not your develop developer login. This is your charity login. So when you log in to manage your charity, there is a link that they provided in the README. I'm going to click on that and generate my base64 encoded token. And it's asking me for my just giving login email, which again, it's not my developer account. It is my charity login, which in this case is this BB demo account here. And I know it because I'm just going to justgiving.com. I am not going to developer.justgiving.com. This is the main charity login. So I'm gonna take that email or that username and put that into the first field. And then it's asking for a password. Let me just make sure that this is going to be hidden. Uh, um, hide this because I'm sharing my screen and I am going to type in my just giving password here. And again, this is for the charity account, not for your developer account. And then once I've done that, I'm going to click the generate basic auth header. And it gives you a nice long string of characters and numbers. Um, and that's what I want to copy. I'm going to copy everything starting with my Q, ending with the equal sign. Control C to copy that to my clipboard. And then I'm going to go back to my notepad and do a find and replace anywhere that I have the double curly brace basic auth. I am going to replace that with that really long string of characters and hit replace all. All right. I think for now, that's everything that I um, that it asked me to change. If I look at if I look at this README, um, I made sure that I updated the uh, app ID. I made sure that I updated the basic authentication token. I made sure that I updated the uh, the URL. So I think I'm good to go with this file. I'm just going to go ahead and save this because at this point it should be. Uh, valid for me to import into Power Automate.
or the Power Platform. So I cleaned up my file with all the configurations that I need. So if I go back into Power Automate, I'm going to go under Data. I'm going to click on Custom Connectors. All right, and then I'm going to add a new custom connector. But because I made all those changes, I'm not going to import from a URL. I am going to import a Postman collection from my desktop. So I'm going to choose this import a Postman collection. It's going to ask me for the name. I'm going to call this just giving skills lab. And then the import file is this one that I just edited, skillslab-fundraising.json.postman collection. And then I can hit continue. And then it should automatically pre-populate everything that I need in order to run this, um, uh, in, in order to run this, these actions that we've got in this connector. So I can see it's got the host in here. If I go to the um, security tab, it's got that filled out for me. If I go to the definition, notice that we've got all of the different actions that I might want to do on the Just Giving side. So look for page updates, um, register a fundraising page, add videos to a fundraising page, um, suggest um, page names or page short names for the URL. All of those are, are pre-populated for me. If I click on create connector here, that's gonna save this. And then I'm gonna go to the test area and we can test it out. There it goes. I got a green check mark, which is good. So now I'm gonna go to the test area. I'm just gonna go to the last one, suggest a page short name. So if I scroll all the way to the bottom and click on number 27, it is going to ask me for um, a few different things. It's going to ask me the preferred name, and it typically generates a short name based off of the preferred name. Um, notice it pre-populates the API key with the app ID. And then I don't have to worry about where it says accept application slash JSON. That's just a standard header for this particular call that we're about to make. It's not letting me actually um, test this yet because I have to create a, a new connection. So notice at the top, there's no connections yet because we just created this connector. Um, in order to use it, I have to have a live connection set up. So I'm gonna click on new connection up at the top. asking me for the username and password. Again, this is not your developer credentials, but this is for the charity to authenticate the charity. So I am going to grab the username, which is the email here. And then I am going to put in the password. Create the connection. And then normally this takes just a moment or two to refresh. I like to click this little refresh icon a few times and wait for the connection to establish. And there it is. And now if I go down, I can put in, maybe I'm gonna put in my preferred name, Trevor Kelly, and see if there is a short name that we can add or append to a URL. So it's going to suggest what the um, uh, what the short name is that would append to the URL. So if I type in justgiving.com slash Trevor, is that a valid fundraising page URL? Let me click on test operation and see what happens here. All right, so I got a failure and I knew that this failure was going to happen. And normally this 403 response 
is uh, giving me an authorization failure. And I can see down below that the application key is missing. Now, if you remember, we did put in the, um, the API key, which was the app key. But the other thing that we need for this is the application secret. If I go back to where we were before, where it was prompting me for this um, to, to generate our authentication header and ask me for the, the login email and the password. If I scroll up, one of the items on the left-hand side is this API key portal. And hopefully if you, um, if you have already created an app and already have a login to a developer account for just giving, you should also have a secret key, which is an even longer combination of numbers and characters. And this is what it actually needs in order to complete that API call. Let me go back to my Power Automate connector. And one of the things that you can do is I can click on step number three for definition. And if I wanted to add this to the call, because it says that it's required, suggest page short names, I can go in and do that. Um, I could do that here by importing from a sample. Normally, the way I like to do it is just to go into the Swagger editor, because that's going to give me all the code that I need, and I can easily copy and paste wherever I might need it. This is also probably worth noting that I'm kind of cheating a little bit because you can embed the secret key into the security area if we had set up um, O authorization or OAuth, and that would allow us to feed in not only the username and password of the charity login, but also the secret key and that token. Um, there's a little bit more complexity for that. So just to get this working, I'm going to cheat a little bit and just add it to a, um, a header parameter in the code itself. So let me find the action that I was trying to complete. And it's at the very bottom, suggest page short names. You can see it right there. And I need another parameter. I'm just going to copy one of these. I'm going to copy the name parameter ask for API key, hit enter, and then paste it right underneath. And then um, notice it's giving me some errors because I'm basically duplicating the parameter above. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to change instead of X API key, I'm going to say X application key. Um, I'm going to default that key, that secret key that we have here. So I don't have to type it in every time. Goes. And then that should fix it. And again, this is my little cheat. This is my shortcut. Anytime I'm going to be making a call, make sure you've got this X application key with your secret token. And I'm going to say this or update connector. So when I go back to step number four, where I test it, hopefully that will return something for me. All right. So I'm going to hit test. I am going to go to number 27, suggest page short names. Um, again, notice that it put in the app ID, the API key, puts in the secret, the application key, uh, kept the uh, accept application JSON. So those are all the header parameters. The only thing I need to do is, I'll just put my name, see if there's any suggested short names based off of me putting in my first name, Trevor, because I want to make some easy, easy ways for my friends and family to donate to my page. Hit test operation. 
But let me make sure that this works. Again, it pre-populates with the API key, the application key. Um, so that is good. And then the only thing I did on this test tab was put in my preferred name. So when I scroll down, here are the list of suggested short names that it gives me. So apparently there's a number of other Trevors that have already created fundraising pages. So my unique identifier should be either Trevor 760, Trevor 3435, um, or I could do some of these longer ones. So let's, let's do another one just to make sure that we feel comfortable. Um, I want to, I'm going to find the one to register a fundraising page. Let's go ahead and build out a fundraising page. Register fundraising page. So if I want to automate the creation of a fundraising page, I can use this method. And um, again, I'll do the same step that I had done previously because it's also going to um, require me to pass in that secret ID, that secret token. So I'm just going to copy where it says um, name is the API key. I'm going to copy everything within those curly braces under parameters. I'm going to go back because I want to make sure that I am following the proper indentation. Oops, of course it didn't. So let me line it up with the one above it. All right. It's still giving me an error because um, it's not allowing duplicative um, parameters here. So instead of API key, I'm going to change the second one to application key. Change the description to application key. And then the default, I'll go back in and find that secret token, which is the long one right here. And then I'm going to paste that into the default so that I don't have to make any changes when I'm actually testing this out. All right, I'll go in and update this. It says it's been updated. And so now I can go to the test step in step number four. Number 16 is register fundraising page. Again, notice all of the header information is already defaulted, so I don't have to worry about that anymore because I did that within the, the Swagger editor. So the only thing I have to worry about is um, filling out the information below, which is what is the information that I am um, including for this particular fundraising page that I'm creating. Um, a lot of these you can leave blank, and if you want, this actually might be a good place to mention some of the documentation that you see here um, in the Just Giving API. You can go to the fundraising option and then click on register fundraising page. And this is going to explain all of the different things that it's asking and what's optional and what's not optional. So the reference field is optional. The charity ID is required. Uh, it tells you what to put in for the event ID. It tells you what to put in for the page short name. Uh, it tells you what to put in for the page title. So this is really, really helpful as you're testing these out to know all the different parameters that you can include when you're testing your, your method. So here, I'm going to leave reference blank since it's optional. Charity ID, I'm going to take from my charity login. And to find your charity ID, log into JustGiving, justgiving.com. Uh, click the login link and log in as your charity. Once you're logged in, you should see something that looks like this, where you can manage all of your campaigns um, and look at donation reports and everything else that your charity can do in Just Giving. I'm going to go to Settings and then Edit Charity Details. 
because that's going to show me my charity ID, which is in, in my case, 278-7791. So let me copy that and put that in here, ID field. Um, I'll leave event ID blank, page short name. I'll call this um, Trevor test uh, skills. Again, this has to be a unique short name. You could have used the um, short name suggester before this particular action if you're putting this into a flow uh, and make sure that you're picking one that's valid. I'm pretty sure no one's used Trevor-test-skills lab. So that's what I'm going to put in this example here. Page title, Trevor's Skills Lab Fundraiser. It's going to ask for activity type. If I go back into the documentation, activity types could be birthday, wedding, other celebration. It could be in memory. So you have to use one of these codes on here. And I'll just say that this is going to be a birthday. The target amount. So how much are we going to ask them to fundraise? Uh, I'll say $617 since today is June 17th. Uh, it's going to say uh, there's going to be some opt-in options. I think I left all of these false. I'm just going to do that for now. Let's see, event date. This is going to require a, a specific uh, date format where the year is first. So I'm going to put 2021. Um, 06, 17. All right, I'm going to leave event name blank for now. Um, I think it does require an expiration date, so I'll do 2021-06-30. Dash dash um, page story. Here is my story for the skills. And I might just leave a, a bunch of these other ones blank and see if it lets me or accepts it. I think the last thing that's really important to do is make sure that the currency is set to USD. The default since just giving was acquired um, and, and used to be a UK company. It's gonna, I believe, default to the Great Britain pound. So make sure that you set the currency default to USD. And I'm going to hit test and see if this works. Uh, and it says it failed. Um, all right, so it says the charity funded not specified and the event name not specified. So there's two things that are required that I did not include. So let me try doing this again with those fields filled out. Uh, one was charity funded. I guess I'll leave that false. Um, I think that's more for tax purposes. And then the event, what was it the event name I think needs to be filled out. Just call it Trevor's birthday. All right, so let me um, let me test again. And 201 is a good status code. That means that it was successful. If I scroll down, it's uh, telling me that it created that fundraising page for me. It gives me the URL and notice that it's using that short name that I had to find. So it's www.justgiving.com slash Trevor dash test dash skills lab. And if I were to open this up in a new tab, here it is. So it automatically created this page for me using the API. It set the $617 target. It populated the name of the fundraiser, Trevor Skills Lab Fundraiser. I put in a story. Here's my story for the skills lab. So it looks like it included everything that we had um, included as part of those parameters. 
So there, there's, um, there's one other thing that I'll mention. Notice that it defaulted it to my user account. Um, when I said register a fundraising page, it automatically claimed it under the charity's name, which is probably something that you don't want it to do. There is a separate call, yeah, for registering unclaimed fundraising pages. And unfortunately, this API call was not included in that Swagger file. So you can add this to the, um, to the connector if you want to register an unclaimed fundraising page. The benefit of doing this is that it lets you go out and generate a fundraising page, but doesn't associate it with a fundraiser. There's a separate call that you can make that says claim fundraising page, where you can tie that unclaimed fundraising page to a fundraiser. So this is important, especially if somebody wants to go in and fundraise for you, but maybe they don't have a just giving user account yet. So we can go in and proactively create that page so that it's ready to start taking donations. And then once that user creates a fundraising, uh, creates a login to just giving so that they can manage it, we can then go back and call this claim fundraising page um, and tie their email account or their user account in just giving to the unclaimed fundraising page. But I want to make sure that we understand what do we do if there's a method that we want to call that doesn't exist in the swagger file? How would we add that? So I'm going to go back into my custom connector. Sorry, if I go back to the definition, because I'm still in the test, and then I'm going to scroll down. Notice that if I'm under step three definition, there's an option at the bottom to create a new action. And it's going to ask me to give it a summary, a description, and an operation ID. Uh, for the purposes of time, I am just going to put this in for all three, but you can give it a more descriptive description and a summary. Um, operation ID uh, probably does have to be register unclaimed fundraising page with no spaces. And then where it's asking for a request, this is where I typically will import from a sample. I'll click that import from sample, go back into the documentation, which is right here. And it says that the verb is put. So let me make sure that I put that verb in here and highlight that. The URL that it's asking for, that should also be in the documentation, which is, here it is. I'm gonna copy that URL here and put that into the URL. Again, notice that there is a, an app ID parameter in there that I have to update. Make sure that I've got my app ID that I'm using. So it's that 10 digit number or, or, or string there. So I'll populate that. Um, it's gonna ask for the header, the headers, uh, which we, um, I believe we saw before. That's where we saw the x-api uh, key and the x-application uh, key. Um, so I'm just gonna put that application key. And I'm gonna use this long character set. And then the body, it should give you a sample in the documentation. If I scroll down even further, I'm gonna take all of this and copy it. And then when I hit import, it should have added it. I'm just going to click update connector. I want to make sure we test it out in the last few minutes here. I know that we're a little bit over time. And if I go in and test this, I should be able to scroll down to register an unclaimed 
fundraiser page. Uh, let me populate that uh, application key, which is this again. I didn't default it, which I probably should have. And then the email address of the person who um, did this, I'm going to put in my email address here. I'm going to leave phone number blank. Unclaimed contact method, I'm going to leave as email. It's going to ask for the inviter name. All right. Uh, I'm just going to see. I'm just going to fill out the relevant information. Charity ID, I'm going to take from my charity um, information. The page short name, Trevor Unclaimed skills but a page title unclaimed page example i'm going to make this a birthday one again i'll make the target amount a little higher 500 dollars here uh 2021 I think I need the expiration date too. What else? What else? What else? Currency. All right, let's see if that works. I'm going to hit test operation. And it didn't like something. Charity funded, not specified. I must have missed one. Charity funded, I'm going to leave that blank or leave it false. All right, let me test that. All right, 201 is a good sign. Says that it created an unclaimed fundraising page. If I go in and look at that URL, I'm going to open up a new tab. Here it is, it says unclaimed page example. Notice there's no name here where it says help blank reach the $500 target. 500 is what I put in as the amount, but it doesn't associate this page with any individual fundraiser. In order to do that, we'd have to add another method, which unfortunately we don't have time to do today, but it would be the exact same process that we just did, but we would add claim fundraising page. And we can, um, this would be a get action that we can go in and add to our connector. And then this would allow us to, to claim that and associate it with a, an actual fundraiser. But it did go out and it created the fundraising page. It just didn't associate it with my record anymore or that demo account record, it, it leaves it blank. Um, thanks for your time. Sorry we ran over a little bit.